Hi guys and welcome back to our vegan kitchen. Today I've got one of my family's all-time favorite recipes and that is for butternut squash lasagna. Yum! <laughs> they love this. They beg for this. I can't make it enough. And it's the good news is it's simple. So what do you need when you make butternut squash lasagna? A butternut squash! <laughs> that is gigantic. I didn't realize it was going to be this big when I got it. So what I would normally do is wash it, which I already have, and I wash my hands too. I usually crack it down the middle, scoop out the seeds, because the seeds are only in this part, and then I roast it 375 for about 40 minutes to an hour or until it's like tender. But this is big. I don't know. Is this going to really fit? On? Oh, maybe it will fit on here. Maybe I should just trim the edge off over here because we got the wooden part. You don't eat that part, obviously, because it's wood. <laughs> and then you're not going to eat this part here because that's... Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, kind of difficult to cut. I'm not going to lie. Squash that's, are tricky. This is the hardest part is cutting this. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to cut this. Maybe I should just cut this part. And then yeah, cut maybe. it in half. Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Please don't cut off your fingers. Well, always make sure your fingers are on top of the blade. Respect the knife. Exactly. My dad would always say, oh, you cut yourself? Well, I guess you didn't respect the knife. And he was right. <laughs> you don't have to... Oh, that didn't come out very even, did it? Eh, it's all good. <laughs> Is it, though? It's close enough. All right. Woo! So we can put that like that. See that? No seeds there. Actually, you probably want to put it like that so it doesn't dry out too much. Good call, good call. And then uh, we're going to cut this part. Yeah. Here's where the seeds are. And I heard that you can actually roast these seeds and eat them too. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so let me scoop this out. Put the rest of these face down, get it in the oven at 375 for 40 minutes to an hour, and we'll be ready to continue. All right, guys, so there's like three components to the butternut squash ravioli. Obviously the squash that is cooking right now, so I figured we'd get a jump on the rest of the components. The second component is the lasagna noodles. That just has to be cooked for half the amount of time that you would normally boil the pasta for so that it's not all the way cooked through but cooked through enough to be like a wet noodle and then the sauce the sauce is what makes it <laughs> and a lot of people just do like a bechamel sauce but i like to put in uh, mushrooms because mushrooms give it a little bit of a meaty bite and a little bit more interest than just beige beige and orange now you have brown so, too a little bit of brown <laughs> And a little bit more flavor because let's face it the mushrooms do give some flavor to it so what we're gonna do first is saute our mushrooms I've got my pot over here I'm going to uh, put it on medium-high with a little bit of olive oil if you're oil free or don't like to use a lot of oil you could just um, saute them with a little bit of water but I like my oil in there so I'm just gonna saute these until they start to sweat off their mushroom water you know not like completely cooked through but like you know gently cooked so i'm using um ooh, a whole pound Whoa. i just got these at sam's club today and they are beautiful so we're just gonna saute maybe five minutes tops all right so here's our mushrooms perfectly cooked not like totally deflated, just a little bit uh, brown and starting to give off their mushroom flavor. Smell them. Woo! Smell, smell good. Smells amazing. So now, this is going to go in the sauce, but we don't want to do it in the same pan that we're doing the sauce. We're going to do the sauce separate and then add the mushrooms into that. And we're also going to cook the pasta in this pot after we take the mushrooms out, but it's too hot right now. So the next step is making the bechamel. I like to use this uh, butter flavored coconut oil. It's really nice. You could use vegan butter. You could even use olive oil if you wanted. So there's probably about a quarter of a cup in there. 
and we're going to add about a third of a cup of uh, flour, just regular flour. And let's see, I got my half a cup thing in there, so a third of a cup is probably like that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to cook this on the stove because we don't want that raw tasting flour. So we're going to do it even lower than medium because I don't want that to burn. So we're going to do this with a whisk. And you know, this is not the type of thing that you leave on the stove and then walk away and you know go about your business. You gotta baby it. You gotta you gotta keep it uh, keep it mixing. We're also gonna add in some flavors too because let's face it, butter and flour not that tasty. Mm. But we'll get there. So let's just cook this a couple minutes and then we'll be back. All right. So this has been cooking for a couple minutes now, and we're gonna start to make it into the sauce. Uh, you can use any non-dairy milk that you want, just don't use vanilla because that would be awful. That would be criminal. <laughs> that would taste awful, and yes, my mom has done that before. So we're just going to be adding a little bit at a time because we don't want lumps and we don't want a big soupy mess. So you just, every, I don't know, say half a cup, almost a cup if you can give a cup. <laughs> Just, you know, work it in with your whisk. You just don't want, um, you don't want lumps because that's no fun. So you keep going until you add probably about four cups. Oh. Yeah. This is going to be our cheese sauce. So it's up to the boil. You can see it's bubbling. I turned it all the way down to low. I've already put in my Vegeta. The phone rang. So we, we had, had a cup. Fun, yeah. So I put, I like to use a teaspoon of salt, like a sea salt, but since I've been using the Vegeta or Vegeta, well, who knows how to say it, it's added so much more flavor. We I love just, it. I love it. And also, I'm adding in nutritional yeast. This is like the holy grail fake cheese additive of vegans everywhere. So we're doing four tablespoons. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's get that stirred up. Now, just like this, it's perfect. But if you want to add something a little extra, a little something-something, you can add in a few slices of your favorite uh, vegan cheese. So if I make this for like a Sunday dinner or something, I'm going to turn off the heat now. It's re It really takes it to the next level. It makes it that much more velvety delicious when I add in a couple of slices of Daya or of Violife or even the uh, newest oat milk uh, Miyoko slices are really, really good. So I've just got some Daya laying around the provolone. And this is nice because it adds a little smoky flavor too. I'm just going to do two slices. And I'm just going to crumble it up and let it sit in there and let it melt. Because Yum. basically we're done with this until we're ready to um, put the whole thing together. Actually, we're going to put the mushrooms in there too. And the next thing that we're going to do is par cook the uh, lasagna noodles. All right, so my noodles are still firm, but they are pliable. So I'm going to pour off as much water as I can without dumping them in the sink. <laughs> Ooh, steamy. Yes, it is. So then I'm going to put a big bowl of ice on top of the noodles because um, this is going to cool them off pretty quickly so that I can actually touch them and work with them and not burn my hands. Wow, that ice is really stuck to the yeah. bowl since I put it in there. That was the ice maker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still the ice maker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's pretty good. I'm just going to let that sit while I prepare the rest of my uh, squash. So I'm just going to show you how easy this is to peel. I've already peeled half of it over here. Mm. I like to keep it separate by half because then I know how much I can put on each layer because we're going to do two layers without, like, you know, having a whole lot on one and not that much on the other. So the skin comes off really easy. Make sure you uh, let it cool enough so that you don't burn your fingers while you do this. It's so easy to peel like this. It's much easier than peeling it before you roast it. Oh yeah. 
because that can be a real pain in the butt. All right, I like to have everything on the table so that I can just do this as quickly as possible, like uh, assembly style. So we're going to start off with a very little layer <laughs> of the bechamel or the vegan cheese sauce. So it doesn't have to cover the whole thing. You just want to make sure that it's coated so that it doesn't uh, stick. So then we're going to do our first layer of noodles. And my pan is pretty big, so I usually do an extra noodle over here on the end. Don't be cheap with the noodles. Uh, <laughs> you'll have extra if you don't uh, put a lot of noodles. I mean, so, also, if you don't overlap a little bit, you're going to have a mess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's the uh, first layer. Now we're going to, um, I just like to break this apart. If yours is still too firm, you can slice it. But, ooh, that's hot. <laughs> what are you doing? I like to make it flat so that it's like a real lasagna. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to have some leftover, honestly. That thing was huge. Yeah, it was humongous. You know what? Maybe I'm going to try and use it mostly up. How about that? Then I like to put a little salt and pepper on top of that because um, it's very bland without seasoning. So make sure you salt and pepper your uh, butternut squash. We'll be there all day if I use the... Uh, yeah, you can't Himalayan be grinding that grinding. salt right now. Okay, and then we're going to add another layer of the bechamel. Yum. This one is a little bit thicker. I could just like eat. Drink this. Just the bechamel is so good. Yeah, it is really good. Especially with the extra two slices of the mm -hmm. um, day of provolone. This is great for Thanksgiving because you kind of got like that winter squash in there for Thanksgiving. Yeah. If you don't want to do like a tofurkey or something like that and you don't feel like doing like a traditional lasagna i do the extra slice on this side this time just to uh, make it a little bit more cohesive it's all about that symmetry it is let go and you get the idea we're just going to do another layer of the squash and then the bechamel, and then another layer of noodle, and we're gonna finish off with the remaining bechamel. We'll show you when it's all put together. All right, we're all ready to put this bad boy in the oven. It looks amazing. Yeah, we it only does. had a couple of noodles left over. We could throw that in the next time that we have pasta. So, little tip I know you savvy people out there already know this, but spray your foil with some oil. With some oil <laughs> so it doesn't stick because this will definitely stick. And you definitely want to cover this because if you don't, they'll be coming for your edges. Mm. The edges of the macaroni will get really hard and you don't want any of your guests biting down on that because they're definitely in danger of taking out a filling with that because it's gonna be hard like a rock. So I've got my oven preheating to 375. I'm gonna pop it in there for between uh, 45 minutes and an hour. Let it rest a little bit because you don't want to eat this piping hot and it's all going to be disheveled anyway if it's too hot. It's best served when it's uh, slightly cooled off because then it has a chance to solidify a little bit. So we'll see you in like an hour. All right. You know what time it is. Oh my God. Ah! <gasps> Beautiful. All right. So this has been sitting for a little bit because I didn't want to eat molten lava. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Yeah. So let's cut out a nice piece that's going to make Maddie <laughs> so full. Oh, boy. I mean, it is pretty thick. It is T-H-I-C-C. -C. That's a deep dish. It is a deep dish. Deep dish lasagna. And it's Monday. We're Garfield. Yeah. <laughs> so let's hope this doesn't all fall apart. I think it'll be okay. Ooh. Yes. Oh, yeah. The trap is clean. Look at that. Wow. That's right? unusual for a first piece. Yeah. You're qualified. Oh, thank you. Wow.
That is a thing of beauty, and it's still blazing hot. Let's just get a close-up on that. Whoa. Yeah. Beautiful. Dang, look at that hair. Turn to the side. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it all off. It looks really good. Thanks. Especially with the purple. All right, time to burn your mouth. I don't want to burn my mouth. <laughs> first things first, I want to eat this mushroom. Yes. <laughs> mm, it's hot. It is very hot. I really do think that the mushrooms take it to the next level. They do. And it's like a nice chewy-ish, like not yes. super chewy, but like a little bit chewy. Right. Texture. Mm-hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, yeah. Want a little bit more of that sauce? Well, this is going to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Ten hours later. Yes. <laughs> it, it was 84 years, whatever that <laughs> Titanic meme is. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here we go. So, like... Dogs drinking. Of course. <laughs> um... <laughs> That is amazing, and I say this over and over again, I am not a lasagna gal. No, she's not. I'm not into, like, a red sauce lasagna. It's just never been my thing. But this lasagna, I adore. I love it so much. The butternut squash. When it's roasted, it's just a gift. Yeah. I mean, I could eat it any time of year, but eating it during the fall, it's just, like... So romantic. Wonderful. <laughs> so, so so food romantic. Yeah. Like the natural sweetness of this, the butternut squash mm -hmm. with that bechamel sauce. <sighs> and then you have like the noodles in there. Like it's just, it's and the really. Mushrooms yeah. With a little bit of chewy meat. Yeah. It's just perfect. I love it so much. She's willing to burn her mouth. I'm going to this hot. All right. <laughs> mm. All right. I could just, like, live off of that bechamel sauce. Make it for a holiday. Make it for a weeknight. Make yeah. it for a Sunday dinner. I will say, though, um, it is rich. And it is very rich. This is not, like, a light meal, so... Right. You can have it with a salad. You can have it with a nice uh, white wine. Yeah, it would be, I would probably be really good with white wine. Yeah. If you're into that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. So, um... Let me finish doing. So thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you guys give this a try. Let us know if you do. Send us pictures. We love to see your creations. If you want to keep seeing her wearing that skirt with the t-shirt. <laughs> I just thought I'd pull out some pieces that I don't usually wear. And it was warm today. So hey, like, red skirt, you're up. It works. <laughs> yeah. So um, let us know if you like this video. Leave it in the comments. Um, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you're not already subscribed. Subscribe. It's free. Yeah. And, um, and thank we'll you again for watching. On, we'll be back on Friday. With We're doing a, our live. Yes. On Friday. I think 2 p.m. probably. Probably. All right. So we'll be back then. Thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, much love.